The learning cycle. Let's have a look at the study of how we learn. Since learning is so important to our survival, lots of scientists, anthropologists, sociologists, psychologists and lots of other ists have spent lots of time studying how we learn. One of those theorists was a man called David Cobb. He developed an idea that the way we learn can be plotted in a circle. Let's have a look at the circle now. This circle can be divided into sections. One, two, three and four sections. Experience is the first stage. This is where you do something or something happens which you experience. The second stage is reflection. This is where time is spent reviewing and evaluating what happened. The third stage is theorizing. This is where you carry out an analysis and consider alternatives. The fourth and final stage is experimenting. This is where you decide what you would do differently next time. Think back to my colouring example. I tried to colour in between the lines with not much success. Let's have a look at the learning cycle again. First I had an experience. This is where someone gave me a black and white outline of a flower and I drew lots of random wild lines all over it. The second stage was reflection. This is when I sat back and looked at my page. It looked good, but a bit messy. In the third stage, theorizing, this is when I thought about being a little less wild with my use of colours. And the fourth stage, experimenting. This is where I decided to be a little more careful with my colouring in next time. Now it's your turn to think back about something that you have learnt. Think about what you did for each stage. Remember, there are four stages in the learning cycle. Which stage did you like best? Some people like doing something. Some people like seeing results. Some like planning for the next time. And some prefer experimenting. Let's look at an example. Can you make great brownies? If I was teaching how to make brownies, here are the steps that I would take. Think about the learning cycle again. Experience the first stage. First, I would get the student to follow the recipe. I like lots of chocolate chips inside. Then I'd follow the next stage, reflection. I would get them to taste the brownies. Mmm, maybe the learner would decide we use too much chocolate. Then the third stage, theorising. The learner may think less chocolate chips needed. And following the fourth stage, in the fourth stage, experimenting. Maybe the learner decided to put in caramel chips instead. What would happen if you only offered one stage of the cycle to a group of people? Say you only experienced the lesson. What would happen if you were only ever allowed to reflect, but not theorise? A good example of this is all those people who invent games, like people who work for Nintendo or Xbox. 
Say the game testers only played or experienced the games, but never came up with ideas on how to improve them. Say the game testers noticed a flaw or a glitch, but never considered how to fix it. What would happen? These games would never be as good as they could be. People would stop buying them. So now you may understand why the learning cycle is so important. Think about a class of students. Think about teaching them a new skill, like driving. What would happen if they only experienced driving but never did any theory? They might not understand the rules of the road and there might be more accidents. Some people prefer one stage of the cycle, some favour another, but to teach a whole group of people a variety of learning stages have to be provided. That is why in class the teacher might have the class read, discuss and write about the same topic. It's not just repeating, it's actually varying the lesson. We need learning in order to survive and in order to learn and evolve. We need learning in a variety of ways, through stages. Experience, reflection, theorizing and experimenting. And that is why the learning cycle is so valuable.